So the California needle. So we start with taking our hook, debarbing it, installing the bead small end first, and then placing it in the vise and making sure that it's secure. We now can go in and we'll apply the thread base. And we're gonna wrap back to our anchor point. Cut off our tag and bring the thread back up to just behind the bead. So now the, for the tail. The tail of this fly is made from polar bear. Now one of the keys with the California needle is its sparseness. So we don't want a huge bushy tail. We're only gonna want maybe about 20, around 20 fibers from your polar bear. So you'll go onto the patch, you'll find a spot where the fibers are gonna be long enough for a tail. Select them out. Hold on. And you're gonna go right, if you can, go right to the base of the fibers and cut them off. Now polar bear has a huge amount of under fur that we need to get rid of. And the way to do that is to reach a little further back up on your polar bear, pinch it good and hard, and then just using your fingers, actually pull it out until it's all gone. Now, polar bear also has a bunch of guard hairs, and it's probably a little bit tough to see, but there's some fibers that are extremely long in here. Uh, before we put this in our hair stacker, it's usually a good idea to take those really long fibers, and you have a choice of either just getting rid of them, but I like to actually just take them and put them back into the pile just a little bit shorter so they somewhat line up. Then you're going to take your hair stacker. And you're going to insert these tips first into the hair stacker. And the way the hair stacker works is simply put the hair in. Tap a few times. Then go up, hold it vertical. And simply just carefully reach in. And grab it by the tips. Now the tips are all aligned. Now we can install it on the fly. So now that we have our tips all aligned on our tail, we can measure it up. So the tail of this fly typically is just a shank's length, but here on the island we like to make them a little bit longer. We like to make it about a hook's length and sometimes even a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to measure it up, and that's just a little longer than a hook's length. I'm going to take and I'm going to transfer that back to my anchor point. I'm going to pinch, and then I'm going to take my scissors and measure it up just behind the bead and actually cut my material off. I then can go in and just like I do with my marabou tails, attach it. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna wrap back to the anchor point. So now I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna wrap it all the way back up to just behind the bead. and I'm gonna attach my crystal flash. Again, by going underneath, and I want, on this fly, we're gonna have two pieces on either side. I like to make them a little bit flashier. And cut these to length. So now to add our wire. So there's a couple of different ways we can do it. I'm gonna show you the way right now where we're gonna wind from the back. So I take my wire, I'm going to just put the tip 
in the bead. And then I can carefully catch the wire at the back and then wind forward to the front of the bead. If you have trouble with this, you can wind your thread up to just behind the bead, then tie the wire in, wrap back to the anchor point, then bring it back up to the bead. I like doing it the way I just showed you because it builds a little bit less bulk on the body of the fly. So the next step is to add the Mylar tinsel. So Mylar tinsel is two-sided, silver on one side, gold on the other. On this fly, we wanna have the silver side out so when we first apply it, we're actually going to have the gold side sticking out. And then when we go to wrap, it flips over and you'll see it, uh, it'll all work out. So gold on this side, we're gonna catch it. Now put it on the side and as you tighten it, it'll have a tendency to flip up to the top of the hook. I wanna run the Mylar tinsel along the top and we're gonna bind down to the anchor point. Then I'm going to bring my thread back up to just behind the bead. I now can apply my Mylar tinsel. The big thing with Mylar tinsel is you need to make sure that you're applying enough tension to it to almost stretch it a little bit. When you apply it, if, it, if you don't put enough tension on it, when we go to put any material on top of it, it'll, it'll definitely start to bunch up on you. So you want to make sure that you're putting enough tension. And again, over top and underneath and slightly overwrapping turns. So we're to the front, now we're gonna catch it with two wraps behind. Two wraps in front, cut the material off. So now for the hackle. So I've selected out a hackle feather that I'm going to use for this fly. I have taken my hackle gauge and I've measured on the, on the feather where on the feather I want to start to use it, where the length of fibers is appropriate for the fly. Now, if you don't have access to a hackle gauge, your, the length of these fibers that you're looking for is one and a half hook gap. So that's the measurement from the shank to the tip times about one and a half. And you can simply just put it up on, the, on your hook, wrap it around and play a little bit and you can find it. So for this feather, I have already determined that it's about here on the feather or here on the feather that it's gonna be appropriate to use. Now I could go in and I could strip off all of this stuff, but there's a bunch of fibers or good usable feathers still left on this. So I'm actually just gonna carefully reach in and cut and then put the excess back in my little trunk for use at a later date. So to prepare the feather now, what I need to do is I need to strip off about an eighth of an inch of fibers on both top and bottom, so to give me something to tie off on. Now with feathers, there is a top side and a bottom side. So the top side is always shiny, and the bottom side is gonna be a little more dull. When we go to attach feathers, we always do it with the shiny side or the top side out. So now that I have my hackle feather prepared, I'm going to install it. Now remember that it's shiny side out. I'm going to place it up against the bead at a 45 degree angle, catch the stem with a couple of turns. I'm just gonna take a gentle tug to make sure it's actually secured. I then will take my hackle pliers, put it on the tip, and I'm gonna do one and a half wraps in the front. Now, remember that we're after a sparse fly, so whatever I do, I don't want to be putting too many wraps of hackle on this, on this uh, fly. So 
So there I've got three or four wraps to the back. I'll let it hang. Then I'm gonna go in with my copper wire. I'm gonna do at least one full turn along the back to make sure that it's caught. And then I'm going to wrap to the front using evenly spaced turns, wiggling as I go to make sure that I'm not catching the fibers. I'm going to go in and catch it with my thread. A couple wraps in front and then I can helicopter off. I now can remove the tip of the feather. And again, a good way to do this is not to snip, but to leave your scissors partially open and just go in, push against the feather and it'll break off. And that way you're not cutting off unintentionally any fibers. I can now go in and do my two four turn whip finishes with a drop of glue in between. And again, be careful not to get the head cement onto the hackle. And there you go. California Neal.